Welcome back. Um, yeah, you can never predict what's going to show up on this channel, can you? But anyway, uh, today we'll take a look at H.R. 1620, the Reauthorization Act for um, about a policy about violence against women. So the way that that's worded and the title of the bill might be a bit confusing. This got quite a bit of nationwide press attention recently just given the way that the vote played out on the house floor yeah the the verbiage of the title is strange um if you were to <laughs> anyway yeah i should start from a less satirical point of view try to lay out some of the facts and then um once we've laid out that framework, then uh, lay out my opinion. But also, I should be open to trying to understand, like, maybe there's something I'm just not understanding here. Uh, so we can see that March 8th this year, Representative Jackson, or Sheila Jackson Lee, a Democrat at 18th District of Texas, introduced this legislation. Um... This has gone through various House committees um, and is no longer encumbered by any of those committees. Um, um, I guess some... Well, I'm sorry. So for a bill to make its way to the House floor for debate, if it involves the commitments of a particular committee, like, I don't know, if there's financial services involved, you're going to need... The Financial Services Committee to review the bill. If there's veterans involved, you're going to need to have the Veterans Affairs Department review the bill, because at some point they will be involved in... I'm not even sure what, but all these various committees had to review the bill. It's gone through a review process in each of these committees, including the one that deals with budgeting, the Ways and Means Committee. Um, so the most recent action was on uh, March 17th. The clerk was authorized to correct section numbers, punctuation, and cross-references, and to make other necessary technical and conforming corrections in uh, this. So let's see, are there other actions that have taken place here? Oh, wow, that's a lot. Uh, maybe I should back up a bit. That's a lot of a lot. Uh, how am I ever going to read this? Referred to committee, referred to committee, can refer to committee, um, considered for, de um, so the House as a whole is starting to consider the bill, um, provide for one hour of general debate. Uh, the House proceeded with one hour of debate pursuant to House resolution about House procedures. The House proceeded with 20 minutes debate on an amendment, I guess, by Nadler. Um, so this is a congressperson. They had some amendment. So congresspersons had seen this bill go through various committees, or maybe had just saw that this bill had been printed or otherwise, I don't know, tabled for discussion. Or maybe they were all surprised to see this suddenly show up in the House. I don't know. But some of them came prepared with amendments or uh, thought of amendments to offer. And various debates occurred on the House floor, and the House proceeded with 10 minutes debate of this, and... Alright, pursuit to Clause 1C of a House rule, further consideration is postponed. Uh, I guess they're taking a break for lunch or something, and, and then considered unfinished. The chair announced that the unfinished business, uh, which had been debated earlier, uh, had been postponed. I don't know, maybe there was a postponement after... I'm not even sure what the, all the House procedures are, but eventually this led to uh, votes on various amendments to this resolution or bill. Um, so, motion to reconsider. Um, I'm not even sure whether, whether this reconsider refers to just earlier delayed action or something but they voted on CR 1432 whatever so um, yeah what does this all mean 
on passage, passed. All right, so the bill as a whole passed the House by a vote of 244 to 172, which I think is the supermajority required for authorization of this particular uh, document. So that gets sent on to the Senate. Um, so I think, oh, summaries in progress. Really? USA Today had an article about this uh, text. All right, so here's the text of the bill. It's a lot of text. We're not going to read it. I've already read this in advance. Oh, there's a PDF. Well, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, yeah, perhaps there's some better way to navigate the site to help stuff make more sense. Um, but I did do a Google search and also found a House Committee on the Judiciary, um, Chairman Gerald Nadler. Uh, so there's a press release. I don't really understand everything here, but what I did see is that the President released a statement that he applauds the House of Representatives for introducing the Reauthorization Act and urges Congress to come together in a bipartisan manner to ensure swift passage of legislation in the bicameral Congress. Uh, so strengthening and renewing um, this act, which does things to help address violence against women, is long past due. Delay is not an option, especially due to our national situation, uh, which has only increased risks of abuse against women and the barriers to safety for women in the United States is just so high and like everything is not in their favor. So domestic violence is being called a pandemic within the pandemic, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, the president supports the notion that women are people too. They have rights. There needs to be process to protect them, et cetera. So uh, this makes sense at face value. Uh, he's grateful to see the House of Representatives ch champion ending gender-based violence. So the, to break that down, um, yeah, this president uses longer sentences, uh, although maybe the previous president used long sentences too and they just didn't tend to make it into publication form. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I should actually at some point resurface my text analysis bot that did various like flesh Kincaid reading scores and such and see with these kinds of statements. Yes, the previous president had a number of good press releases that were well worded. Um, I'm not sure if this uh, particular president has longer or shorter or more concise or something, but uh, that is a complex sentence. So let's break it down. So he, the president is grateful to see the House of Representatives chair champion, the House of Representatives as a whole, champion ending of gender-based violence. And uh, president uh, urges Congress to follow past president as there are previous versions of legislation for this and bring together a strong bipartisan coalition for swift passage of the legislation. So, President strongly favors legislation, thinks that violence against women is bad. Uh, the House Speaker Pelosi said something. In general, I tend to get enraged when I read what she says and writes. Uh, so we're not going to read that. Um, so... Yeah, let's stick to the matter at hand and not the politics at hand. Um, so, yeah, this reauthorizes the 1994 bill and further strengthens it. And I guess, trust me that that's what the bill's about. Um, let's see, can I get the PDF to show on the stream? Oh, I can. Is the PDF at all useful for a streaming format? Uh, a bill, that's large. 
be it enacted by the Senate and House uh, table of contents. So there's a bunch of definitions, availability funds, stop grants, um, grants to encourage improvements and alternatives to the criminal justice response, legal assistance for victims, grants to support families in the justice system, outreach and services to underserved populations grants. And so like arguably, yes, okay, this got passed the Ways and Means Committee and all the other committees, arguably perhaps some of the representatives who voted against the bill might argue that um, the definition of underserved populations and grants and some of these definitions could theoretically be different than they are in the bill. There could be legitimate concerns that we're spending in ways that don't make sense. So there could be some reasons why Congress people think that this perhaps is not the right bill and that there should be a better, a better or a different bill for something like this. Um, so there are, there are some monetary implications uh, to this or spending uh, implications. Uh, criminal provisions, child custody for rape survivors, enhancing culturally specific services for victims of domestic violence, for dating violence, for sexual assault, and for stalking, and grants for lethality assessment programs. So, um, overall, so this is, uh, this section 101 through 109 um, deals with uh, policy changes. I've read a summary of this that was attached to by the USA Today, or those that USA Today linked to, that I believe some party within the House had produced a summary of the bill. But yeah, these sections here are about changing rules and about uh, federal government support for various things. Um, and that is kind of a theme that runs throughout the bill is that even if some sections were struck down, other sections would still support victims, support certain populations, support groups that are perceived as minorities, etc. I'm perhaps misspeaking in some way there, but um, that seems to be the gist of what this bill is about. And um, yeah, obviously violence is bad, and um, let's see, Title II, improving services for victims. Obviously, if there are going to be services, and if it's... I don't know why this is a federal thing and not a state or local thing. Localities probably couldn't handle it. States probably would fail to budget for it. Federal government will budget for things and just spend irresponsibly and not in ways that always help victims. But in many cases, they will help victims. So, I mean, what do you do? If you were to make states do this sort of thing, first of all, federal government can't compel state action but perhaps states could somehow better serve these purposes than some person sitting in D.C. could. But that's separate from the notion of, do we need to do something? Yes. Do we need to do this thing? Maybe, probably. Um, uh, unless, like, amendments can be provided that show, like, there's something better we could offer. Um... So yeah, and then there's services protection and justice for young victims of uh, violence against women, uh, violence reduction practices. So you're gonna have studies that are conducted by the CDC. I don't know exactly why this would fall under the CDC's um, employ. No, employ is the wrong word. Jurisdiction is also the wrong word. I don't know why the CDC is involved in this. Um, but yeah, there obviously some group of government would be doing practices to study like what's going on. 
Uh, I don't know that the CDC is in the best position to do that sort of thing, but um, there's just a lot of stuff in this bill. It's a 259-page bill that is a renewable 1994 bill. And, okay, yeah, the 1994 bill is going to be long, probably just about as long as this. I haven't looked, but uh, bills that make it past Congress tend to be long, tend to include provisions for every section of federal government doing something, or it feels that way anyhow. Uh, strengthening the healthcare system's response to be able to cope or help victims of this. Um, uh, safe homes for victims. Uh, economic security for victims. Uh, homicide reduction initiatives. And safety for Native American women. Um, so... Uh, let's see. Office of Violence Against Women. Establishment of an office. That's interesting. Yeah, because I was wondering, like, what, why is the CDC doing this? Well, shouldn't there be some other branch or department or something that deals with this? Because, like, CDC deals with disease. And, okay, while you could argue that there are... It's complicated and doctors and such will need to refer to psychologists or other things for just people who need help. Um, yeah, I. it's just a really complex bill. Uh, the president says that action is overdue, and he's correct, but is this the correct action? I'm not sure. Is it a good action? Yes, of course. But um, should something else be done? Is this, like, it'll be interesting to see what the Senate does when this bill uh, approaches the Senate. Um, so, let me get through the rest of this table of contents, and we'll get back to the summary. And, um, it's improving conditions for women in federal custody um, for incarceration and such. So, folks who are in prison. Now, that's not just... I mean, I would argue, like, rights for prisoners is a larger thing than just rights for women. And I'm not saying this should be taken out, but I'm saying, my goodness, every president says, gosh, we need to improve the situation for rights for prisoners and just the horrific things that happen. Um, and presidents are correct, but do things ever occur? I would like to see larger reform for that sort of thing. It's just tremendously hard to come by. Uh, but this is a small, small step in the right direction that will at least deal with the problem that women uniquely face in federal incarceration. Um, okay, and then there's law enforcement tools to enhance public safety. And there's uh, a consent loophole that needed to be closed because law enforcement officials could claim that, oh, the victim gave consent and some really strange, uh, some law enforcement acting within their unique privilege should not, that unique privilege is never meant to allow harassment of women. So, um, and okay, then there's other sections, um, so, yeah, they have uh, offender management, uh, a hotline, um, a court-appointed special advocacy program, special advocate program, uh, federal victim assistance reauthorization. So, uh, um, I mean, I get that the letter of many policies is so extremely dated. And from a time when we're less acutely aware of abuse than we are today. So, um, yeah, it's important that many of these policies be updated to reflect what we now know and understand. Um, as for funding and spending and things like that, okay, I could see perhaps one party 
could argue, I don't know even how you'd argue it, but um, I guess little piece by little piece you'd argue, what about this provision, what about that provision? Um, does this actually serve the needs of the American citizen? Um, is there any better way that we could serve needs of American citizens than this particular bill? Um, you could maybe argue some of those things. But at face value, I'm really not seeing anything objectionable in here. Um, the NRA did release a statement that the way that this policy is written... Um, could for th even things as simple as a tweet it could uh, limit a person's access to a firearm and um, I mean that's the NRA's position on this particular legislation I hope I'm not misrepresenting the NRA's position on this particular legislation but um, yeah, that's the table of contents here anyway. Um, so we could see various actions. There were four roll call votes. Um, and this has passed the House by a narrow margin. Um, and will make its way onto the Senate. who will get the chance to debate the bill. Um, not entirely sure... Uh, wait. Actions overview passed, passed or agreed to in house by this roll number 86. I don't really care for reading off the names of the congresspersons. This is all public knowledge anyway. If you're some particular congressperson you care for or don't care for, you could look this up. Um, so I'm curious, actually, most well. Uh, so it's introduced in the House, and then slightly over a week later, got passed in the House. I want to know what these amendments were about, because really that's... Um, I've been saying that... I mean, we saw the vote, right? The vote here was 244 yay, 172 nay. There's 172 people who, for whatever reason, thought this was not the right bill. Uh, or the right time. Yeah, the Senate um, will get to debate the bill. Yeah, it's just that the leader of the Senate might not ever um, set the bill for a vote because politics. Um, now I was curious about where that might add um, and part of my curiosity is, like, why I'm doing this live stream. I think it's important to get out the news. Obviously, the news is there that the House passed the bill. Uh, so I'm trying to understand if there's any legitimate objection to this. And I can't understand how there could be. Um, I mean, I read through the summary of the bill. The summary of the bill looked fine. So I'd like to know, like, what are these amendments that... Agreed to Amendment 31, uh, and the Nadler Amendment, uh, the uh, Wagner, Wagner Amendment was agreed to, and then this Stefanik uh, Amendment failed to be agreed to. So what is this that failed to be agreed to? What is this that... Um, to replace the bill's text with the text of the Violence Against Women Extension Act. So this bill was an alternative that said just take the original bill and extend it. And don't do all the other things that are listed here. And that amendment failed. Okay. At least as I'm reading it here. Um... And so then the House voted on the bill as a whole. Wasn't there one other amendment? There's A003, A004, A002. Where's A001? 
Is there an AO01? Is there any reason that somebody who made an amendment could still not be happy that this bill passed? <sighs> AO01? I'm not finding an AO01. Yeah, I don't know. I guess one would be the bill itself, then if these are amendment two, etc. Or maybe one just didn't make it into this schedule somehow. Um, maybe people are not so happy about this Nadler amendment, Wagner, Wagner amendment, etc. I'm not sure. What is this 31 amendment? Um, an amendment comprised of the following in the House report. Um, jeez. Okay. Uh, do 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 do. To accompany do 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 do. Fourth sentence to summary the provisions of this resolution. Under a structured rule, the resolution provides an hour of debate. But no. Explanation of waivers. Um, no, but this is not... Oh, I'm sorry. This is the entire like schedule under which things were debated. Alright, so if I search for like AO2, I don't find that here. Um, so in Part B. Part B. Is there a Part B somewhere here? Uh, summary of amendments in Part B in order. Burgess of Texas required the DOJ and HSS to issue guidance and best practices uh, on strategies to improve coordination of training. So require departments to communicate with each other, ensure that survivors can access transitional housing, Require that the Attorney General shall make publicly available on the DOJ website reports involving police sexual misconduct. So this could get complicated, because like if you want federal government and local police to cooperate and issue accurate reports and such, you're also requiring that everything that gets reported gets published on the website could be some communication issues, but maybe this is still a good thing. Ensures that the inclusion of Native Indian, Alaska Native, and Hawaiian Native groups. In progress of review, it's for those groups, um, has the right to be informed of the status and location of an assault evidence collection kit. Clarifies that stop grants can be used to cover the fees associated with replacing driver's license and birth certificates for survivors and their children. Um, it requires the department. So yeah, this amendment just looks like a number of really rational things that are reasonable that just for whatever reason didn't have time to go back through all the various House committees and were instead brought to the House floor and agreed upon and added to the bill um with uh technology and the website confuses some of that but um i could see like a number of these things being reasonable to consider and uh it'll be interesting to see the senate take that up then there's a part c about um correcting a typographical error creating a hardship waiver for agricultural workers who are unable to fully satisfy the work requirement for lawful permanent residents due to a permanent disability or deteriorating health or advanced age and provide the DHA secretary with discretion to delay E-Verify for up to six months under circum certain circumstances. Uh... This, I'm not so sure about. Why is this part of the Violence Against Women Authorization, whatever the bill's called? What, what does this Section 2 for Agricultural Workers have to do with women? Why is this potentially going to cause the entire bill to fail, or maybe not get voted upon? 
I'm not saying this is not important. I'm just saying, like, if you want something to get past the Senate, like, how is this ever going to help this bill get past the Senate? So maybe that might be pointed out and this might get sent back to the house and they tell the house guys uh we're gonna strike this part what do you think and this could go back and forth a bit i don't know uh what does the bill do so in summary um yeah let's go back uh where do i go how do you navigate this website congress.gov let me use my browser back button so the summary is absent um it's still in progress because there was a lot that took place but um this bill is about or this house resolution rather is well yeah the house resolution is a bill it says that violence against women is bad and we need to do stuff to make it happen less and to penalize when it does occur and to create support for women who have been uh, victims of violence. So that's a very high level summary. Um, it'll be interesting when this actually does get a summary here, what Congress will write about it. But yeah, this is saying that, I mean, you heard one congressperson years ago say that corporations are people too. I would say that women are people. I, I think that that's not objectionable. And so, like, yeah, they need to have the same, they need to have this level of support, and they need to have, given that violence against women is a problem that is gender-based, in so many instances, um, I'm, I mean, yes, you will find violence against men sometimes, but this sort of thing to protect victims of violence, this sort of thing to improve our institutions to be a, capable of handling things that they just don't handle well today, that makes sense to me. The way in which some of the spending might happen in this bill might, I don't know, perhaps there's better ways that some of these problems could be solved, but something needs to happen. Um, so some of the sections of this bill might not, I don't know, the Senate might, uh, like, you're saying, uh, given the cloture rule, they might not even get this to a vote. But um, I assume if somehow this were to get to a Senate vote, they're not just going to straight up pass this. It's an almost 300-page bill. Uh, we saw that there was at least one section in there about agriculture. There are other sections in there that might not have to do with the title of the bill. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Another possibility that we might see is that um, Democratic members of the Senate might attempt to introduce their own legislation that may be similar, may be different. Um, so that might be another thing even if this particular bill is just so unappealing to um, the Senate Majority Leader that maybe this just doesn't get to, uh, or I'm sorry, it's not appealing to the Senate. This might not get to a vote in the Senate, but they might try to introduce their own legislation or something. I'm not sure. Um, one thing that's... So, all bills that require funding have to originate from the house so if the senate were to introduce something they'd have two paths about this one they could just take some other bill from the house strike all of its text and put in this whatever they want to and uh, it would have to go back to the house and revisit it by the ways and means committee and so forth um that'd be one possibility another would be that the senate could introduce a bill that doesn't change anything about funding that's 
tries to fix all the other endemic problems. Um, so that could also occur. Um, but yeah, I think it's important that like try to get the news about what this bill is about instead of just focusing on the politics and the roll call. Um, because yeah, our, I mean, government is complicated. Any system is very, uh, any large system with many interactions between nodes or between people uh, gets more and more complicated the more nodes or people you add to it. So when you have something like Facebook that has a billion plus users or something like that, um, each potential connection between two users is a uh, potentially adds value to that network. I forget what this is called in information theory, but the value of a network is proportional to the square of the number of nodes or users or whatever the entities are that could connect to each other. That's why the internet's so valuable is because you can connect basically any computer to any computer. So, um, yeah, the internet has a tremendous number of nodes. Uh, Congress, there's the two houses. Uh, I'm sorry, there's the House and the Senate, which it's a bicameral Congress. There's the two chambers. Um, the Senate, 100 members. The House, I forget how many members, but if you add the numbers in the vote together, you get something like 300, I don't remember. But yeah, that's even just considering all the interactions between 300 people, um, that's a lot of possible interactions. And then those people get together in these groups that are called house committees, and they have their own complex interactions. So this is politics stuff is really complicated. And just one party excoriating the other is not going to get us anywhere. Um, this bill in some form, something needs to be done to improve our laws and policies. That much is pretty obvious. Um, uh, what's not so obvious is whether spending authorized by the bill is merited or if the spending should be done in some other way uh, or should be done through the states or I don't know. It could be complicated. But yeah, um, so... The Senate will need to figure out what to do. Um, so they might filibuster this for the entire Women's History Month. That's possible. Um, that would be sad if that happened. Um, so I'm not sure that I have more information to add. Um, I know I did express a desire to like share my opinion and I've been hinting at that throughout this discussion. Um, so, um, one thing that absolutely is not helping this discussion is the NRA's comment. If you read USA Today, you'll see what the NRA stated about this, and they're really not helping. They... I guess they just don't understand that, like, I mean, they have whatever it is that drives them to say whatever they say seems to completely miss the point on this. I mean, the, arguably, there could be some very, very tiny, small truth in it that, like, a person, on account of having said something, no longer has access to a firearm um, and that could endanger that person arguably um, so the NRA takes a stance and says a thing and maybe there is some very very small kernel of truth but it seems to miss the far larger picture that like Congress needs to get something done um, and so I would ask the NRA, like, okay, if you had to write a bill to address the real world problem, what would you write? How would you make the world a better place?
Um, yeah, so I'm really not impressed at all by the NRA's statement on this, which seems to ignore the majority of the bill and just stir up a lot of anger and confusion. Um, or so it seems, anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know that I have other facts to add. Um, politics is complicated. I don't think we want to read through this 300-page bill. There are summaries available uh, online for this particular bill. So, um, yeah, I would encourage reading that. I would encourage discussing this. I would encourage that this needs to be um, thought about in a responsible way. And uh, something needs to be done. Um, and then if there are problems, um, those problems need to be handled in a responsible manner. And so potentially the Senate could, I mean, there's a hundred people in the Senate. Um, the Senate could say that this particular bill was just not responsible, not focused enough. They could ask for a clean bill. Uh, the president is saying that this particular bill needs to pass or that uh, action needs to be taken. So the president has weighed in already. Um, and I don't see anything wrong with the president's statement. Um, so, yeah, hopefully the Senate either produces their own bill um, that tries in some way to do things that this bill is trying to do. Uh, but perhaps if there are objections due to funding, maybe it does things funding-wise differently, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it seems like a lot of things need to be considered, and this is a month to do it, and half the month has already expired. This bill did not make it to a house vote until March 17th. That itself is a bit suspicious to me. I mean, maybe that's just how Congress normally operates. But if I were a member of Congress and I wanted my bill to be presented in the best possible light, and I wanted it to happen during Women's History Month, I would have introduced the bill on March 1st. I would have asked all the committees, please let me take this to the House floor immediately uh, or as soon as possible. So the fact that this didn't get introduced until March 8th and then didn't get voted on until March 17th, that has me curious. That could potentially indicate that there is a strong desire to get this done during Women's History Month there equally is a desire to get this particular bill and not some other similar bill done. And so maybe this was timed, or maybe there are other reasons for the timing of this. I, I don't know. Co politics is complicated. But what astounds me is that this took until March 8th to be introduced. Perhaps there were other bills that had been introduced before the 8th, and this on the 8th just happened to be the best form of the bill. Maybe there are other things going on. I don't know. Uh, politics is complicated. The NRA is not at all helping. I'm really disappointed in the NRA and for their statement, even if maybe somehow they're not wrong, but it doesn't feel like they're right either. So, yeah guess I did this boring live stream just to encourage people to try to become educated, try to get discussion out in a reasonable manner, try to realize that people need to cooperate to get things done, and that despite so many people voting against this bill, it did get past the House. And the important thing is that next some bill gets past both houses of Congress, whether it's this or some similar bill. Something needs to get done.
And if it's going to get done, it's got to be this month. It's Women's History Month. So if this doesn't get done during Women's History Month, I'm skeptical that it would ever happen. Um, so I don't know. Maybe my skepticism is unfounded. We'll find out. But yeah, um, politics is complicated. I've seen a number of people get quite emotional about how people voted on this bill. And I'm just saying, try to hear those people out, even if what they're saying doesn't make any sense. Maybe somehow it makes sense to someone. I don't know. Yeah, contact your member of Congress. So this congress.gov um, informs you of who's your member and how to contact them. If you have uh, concerns about this. Um, so... Hope you all found this somewhat interesting. Uh, I know I generally don't do this kind of, even this uh, cursory research of this sort of politics, but um, this seemed like a particularly important bill, so I thought to give it my best chance. Um, I am curious whether other uh, live streamers or legal analysts, um, not that I'm a legal analyst, but I'm curious whether someone will take up the torch and try to educate the public better than I can do or have done. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens throughout the rest of the month. Um, best of luck to both houses of Congress and getting something passed that serves the needs of half of Americans. Well, that is a video. We'll make that highlight available. Uh, what do we do now? Like I said, there's just too much. Uh, I can't get through it. The Senate is going to have to do something or they'll just stonewall it. Um, cause these are all the co-sponsors of the bill. Yeah. Uh, it's got this little trademark up here, authenticated U.S. government information from the GPO. Um, it's, it's one of the government offices. Um, they have all these amendments about trying to better define terminology and such, but yeah. I'm just disappointed in one little detail here that there's this hardship waiver for agricultural workers. Important as that may be, if that's going to cause this entire bill to be held up, um, then perhaps Nadler and Lofgren and Newhouse should have reconsidered whether or not this amendment, even if it's popular, whether it's appropriate. And the Senate tends to be the more mature House of Congress about some of those things. Uh, so that's Pelosi's statement. I know I said when I read and hear Pelosi's things, I tend to get mad. Let's find out how mad I get. Um, today our nation takes a great step forward to advance justice, safety, and dignity for American women. As the House reintroduces a landmark and transformative violence against women act, we are particularly proud to do so when under the leadership in the White House of President Joe Biden a staunch champion of this law and of strong action to ensure that every woman can live free from fear of violence in her life. Democrats, VAWA, reauthorization builds upon uh, the progress forged over the two and a half decades since this legislation. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Since this legislation has first passed, this robust and bipartisan long-term reauthorization strengthens and expands essential protections for the most vulnerable, including immigrant, LGBTQ, and Native American women. Among its many life-saving provisions, it strengthens services for victims and survivors, empowers law enforcement to protect their communities, helps stop abusers and stalkers from maintaining firearms, and expands protections for victims and survivors' financial security. 
This legislation is particularly needed as the coronavirus crisis forces millions of Americans to quarantine, including too often in homes that are unsafe for them and their families. House Democrats will move swiftly to pass this legislation and send it to the Senate and then to the president's desk so that we can uphold the right of every woman, woman everywhere to live free from abuse. Yeah, no, I was right. I was right. Um, she just has a way of wording things that is just so incredibly divisive. So anyway, um, the National Coalition Against Dem Domestic Violence. Uh, as a survivor myself, okay, that's nice. Uh, not really, but come on, I just. Uh, so there's the YWCA. Uh, I don't, I'm not super familiar with the YWCA. I know, like, they exist. They know the YMCA exists. Uh, these Christian associations for young men and young women. Um, there's the Legal Defense and Education Fund. And uh, to do so. Yeah, there's all these various institutions that have their particular thing that they need to say about this. Um, so, is there any institution that I've heard of before that is not... Man, I'm trying to avoid being dis divisive here, but, like, it's hard. Okay. Just some of those things sound so extraordinarily optimistic. That reality is that life is complicated, politics is complicated, and jeez. Anyway, um, yeah. That's that, I suppose. Uh, I should take a break and enjoy some dinner. Um, and then maybe come back and I'll play uh, some game later. Um, yeah, thanks for the discussion. Uh, thanks especially to the insight that I had completely forgotten about from the Lama Lord that this might not even get to a vote in the Senate. So that would be sad, but it's at least, I mean, if this doesn't get to a vote in the Senate, if you divide a month with 30 days and a half and you come up with a number 30 divided by 2 is less than 17, so it's at least the house, partly the house's fault and partly the majority leader in the house's fault if uh, she failed to bring this forward in a timely fashion so that proper debate could be had. Um, so, yeah, uh, it would be good if something got past the Senate something got past the house because there's so many good ideas in here but who knows uh, the bad ideas might prevent this from getting passed something should be done so i'll be following this as it progresses i'll be trying to do my best to inform people about the antics that politicians have whatever yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good day.